Welcome to Dined Out, I am Mal Foster and today we're going to be taking a look for the very first time at Lars von Trier's Dancer in the Dark. Furthermore, after having watched it, I'm going to go through the five factors of judgement. And decide whether or not I want to keep or delete Dancer in the Dark. For those of you who like this kind of thing in a longer format, and preferably even in an audio format, you can find a full-length podcast episode based on this exact feature for this exact film down in the description box. Otherwise, let's get into it. Dancer in the Dark. Keep or delete? In terms of narrative, when I first started watching Dancer in the Dark, I really didn't know what was happening. With the whole handheld style that Lars is applying here, the rules of dogma, and Bjork just swanning around talking to people in her community theatre group, I thought this looks like a really bad Christopher Guest film on amateur dramatics, and I was worried. As the story plays out, it's... It, how can you even describe it? It's like a really bad soap opera with really bizarre twists that are really quite dark and menacing, but yet somehow it engaged me. Somehow I wanted to stick with it, which wasn't likely within the first 10 minutes. The first 10 minutes, I kind of felt like I'm going to abandon this pretty quickly after really not knowing what on earth was happening. But as I said, as it progresses and it kind of gets stranger and you have the dynamics build between Bjork and the police officer character whose name I cannot remember, um, it becomes ridiculous and kind of ludicrous to say the least. And as I say, a bit like a demented soap opera, but it is engaging and it made me want to know what is happening, where are we going with this? I think maybe because it is knowingly ridiculous um, and it takes some knowingly ludicrous sort of left turns that it works. I think if it had been presented in, in a more earnest fashion and it wasn't quite as knowing and it was just badly written accidentally, then yeah, it probably wouldn't have had the same effect. I think Von Trier definitely knows that he's going for a sort of soap opera type melodrama with the narrative. And I think because of him knowing that and working towards that purposely, that's why it worked for me, at least. I know it won't have worked for others, but it, it did, after a little bit of a shaky start, actually find some traction. There are plot holes. There are just ridiculous plot holes in it. There are questions to be applied at every junction. But yeah, I don't know. It's just the, the, the way it's executed, the way... No pun intended. And... Uh, the way it's put together, the way it's pulled off, is, is actually really quite engaging, despite being kind of ridiculous. And, as I say, riddled with questions and plot holes. It... it works, weirdly enough. Much like the narrative of Dancer in the Dark, I was initially concerned with the performance of Bjork. The accent, it just... it really threw me. I didn't know if it was her trying to do a twist on her normal speaking accent, if she was trying to be like an Essex girl or something. You like the movies, don't you? I love the movies. I didn't know what the hell was going on and it really kind of threw me off getting into the character of finding any attachment or any sort of emotional connection to the character. But, like the narrative, as it goes on, as you kind of find yourself investing more time with the character, and with Bjork's performance through subtle nuances, through certain looks, pauses, hesitations, um, reactions to things that are happening, then, yeah, I found myself really kind of becoming more attached to her and actually kind of caring about what happened to her. Despite the sort of plot holes in the narrative, you still kind of find yourself drawn to her. It's a very emotional performance. The longer it goes on, the more Bjork rings out of that character and the more you find yourself 
attached and connected to the character. So yeah, a little bit of a shaky start to begin with, but the more time you spend with Bjork's performance and the more you see her really sort of fill out in intimate detail the workings of a very introverted and kind-hearted person going through a tough situation that just keeps getting worse, the more sort of empathy she draws from you as a viewer. And yeah, wasn't sure what was happening at first, but by the end was really kind of wowed by her performance. In terms of aesthetic, I'm not going to lie, I am not a fan of uh, Von Trier's handheld dogma applied style here, just wibble wobbling all over the place. For a big chunk of the film it felt like motion sickness. And granted after about 10-15 minutes I did adjust somewhat, but still, yeah, it's really not for me. I understand it adds a sort of touch of graininess and reality to it, a sort of fly on the wall voyeuristic aspect to the film but it just it, it wasn't for me at all it has its moments for example when i think it's bill is the police officer's name when he finds what's been happening to his money uh with selma etc and that whole thing is revealed i think it works brilliantly there because you feel like you are in the room that whole fly on the wall sort of uh, approach is, is a great way to reveal that and create tension that's a perfect example of it being used really effectively, but throughout the rest of the film I did have issues with it. Sticking with aesthetics, one thing that I really, really do like about this film are the musical numbers. I think Bjork's singing voice is great. I think the way in which diegetic sounds in the world are used as rhythmic, mechanical, percussive items are, are, are great. I love the way they become part of the composition, um, or even just become the composition as a whole. I think that's great. The way that the musical numbers are filmed are great, the numerous uh, static angles, which, you know, the, the, the use of static solitary shots within the film really worked for me because it's, a, it's different, obviously, to the whole wibbly wobbly drunken vision of handheld Lars walking around doing his dogma thing, but, and it just it breaks it up and it adds something different. There are other bits and pieces throughout that I, I think the aesthetic works quite well in. There's a sequence in which uh, Selma is walking back home across the train tracks and just the look and sort of texture of that shot, that misty sort of hazy look is fantastic. It still sticks with me now. <clears throat> in terms of direction, this is for me easily Von Trier's best film, but that's not saying much because The Idiots is the worst film I've ever seen and I really cannot stand breaking the waves. I've always had a bit of a tattered um, relationship with him. I've, I've admired some things he's tried and done, but for the most part, I've just not really liked him as a director. So yeah, I was kind of up against it going into this film. Didn't really have high expectations, but I came out really quite impressed by the way that he's, he's made a film that is part conventional, part not at all. I mean, we're talking about a Von Trier musical, which sounds so wrong on paper, but yet it works because he's not fully conformed. He's taken some conventional aspects, but he's applied most of his own logic and design to it and made it in his image, and it works. I'm not going to get onto the topic of him and his, his abusive behaviours with Bjork. That is, it's, it's frankly disgusting and I don't want to talk about that. I don't think he's pulled anything out of her performance at all. I think that's all her, so he gets zero credit for that. But in terms of actually putting the film together, I will give him credit for that. I think he's come in with a vision. He's used some, some good ideas and used them effectively. Some things I'm not too keen on, as discussed with the whole handheld style, but for the most part, yeah, this is this is a good directorial effort, and it's his best feature to date. Enjoyment. Uh, yeah, nobody, nobody that is sane can say they enjoy this film. It, you know, you've got to be sadistic if you enjoy Dancing in the Dark. You can be impressed by it, which I was thoroughly. You can see how it works effectively as a piece of drama, as a piece of filmmaking, absolutely. But to say you enjoy it, uh, yeah, I'm not inviting you around to dinner anytime soon if you enjoy this movie. So that leads us to the big question. Dancer in the Dark, keep or delete? I have to keep it. 
Which is surprising, because I kind of expected to not like this movie, and within ten minutes I kind of felt like this was just going to be either switched off or it would be deleted. But it's not. I'm going to keep it. Because of the performance from Bjork, because of what Von Trier does get right in the film, and because it shouldn't work, but somehow it does. So yeah, Dancer in the Dark we're going to keep and we're going to put it in our film library for the rest of time. Which is something I never thought I would ever say about a Lars von Trier film. Yeah.